the way. Listen, you don't run from church to jam blessing. I remember a young man was looking for contract in an organization. And when they asked him, the, the, the man called him and said, where are you? He said, I'm in, I'm in church. Work is going on in church. And I'm in church attending to the work. And the man drove all the way to the church and gave him work in church. And his thinking was, if church is so important to you that you can be away from getting these millions, then let the money meet you in the church. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? You don't run from church to run into resources. Obadiah chapter 1 and in verse 21, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So the house of God is the place where people possess their possession. Somebody who will possess his own today say a loud amen. Number six, the house of God is the place of wholeness and deliverance. Is the place of wholeness and deliverance. Is the place where sicknesses are healed and chains are broken. About there, 121, we already said that upon Mount Zion there is deliverance and there is holiness, and the sons of Jacob, the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. Matthew chapter 21 verse 14 the Bible said Jesus was in the temple and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them there they came to him because they knew the temple is the place where healing takes place in Luke chapter 13 verse 10 to 13 we saw the story of uh, Jesus he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath and, it, and behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eight years she was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. When Jesus saw her, he called to her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Immediately. Now this was a woman who had been going to church bent like this for years. Maybe she went to church that day not expecting a healing. Obviously, it was not healing that was taking her there anymore. She went to just worship God. And suddenly, healing met her. Her affliction could not stop her dedication. So her dedication swallowed up her affliction. Is God speaking to somebody here? If your affliction cannot stop your dedication to God, then your dedication to God will sooner or later swallow up your affliction. Shout the Lord and say, Amen. And as I speak right now, there are people in church today who came to this church with one pain or affliction or the other. Nobody prayed for you. And the pain has left. And you, can, and you don't know the exact day in which it left. You were just coming to church and the pain disappeared. Anybody like that? Anybody like that? Let me see your hand. Yeah. He's, he's, he's so exuberant there. At the end of the service, if, if yours is such a drastic testimony you want us to know, we'll know. Because you, you just came. Nobody prayed for you. Nobody touched you. All, all you did was to show up. And that affliction checked out. Let me tell you. 99% of the healings that we have seen in ministry took place inside church. When people meet me on the road and say, and say, please just lay your hands on me. And I say, come to church. They thought I, I didn't want to pray for them. Or, or they thought I, um, I was trying to avoid responsibility. My greatest strength is where we are gathered. And my greatest strength is where the move of the Holy Spirit is happening. Because I'm aware that I'm not the healer. He is the healer. And he said, where two or three are gathered, I am there. So I am so sure that he is there. And once he is there, something must happen. Somebody say loud amen. Somebody say loud amen. I believe that somebody's healing is taking place today. Everyone who came here with any ancestral curse, any generational curse, any family curse, any pain, hypertension, diabetes, prostate, whatever it is you came here with today is leaving you alone right now if you believe that shout the loudest amen 
Somebody say amen. amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. And so, the house of the Lord is that place of wholeness and deliverance. And finally, the house of God is the place of commitment and consecration. Is the place of commitment and consecration. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 to 26, Paul the apostle spoke, he said, Don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhort one another, especially as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully, do you see that? Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together so you don't fall into the trap of sinning willfully. Absence from the fellowship is doorway to sinfulness. He said, don't forsake the assembly because it can give you the tendency to sin easily. In the book of Psalm 89 verse 7, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. And to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. So the house of God, the assembly of the saints is where the fear of God is great. And the fear of God keeps us from sin. According to Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. So every time you frequent, you are in the fellowship of the brethren. It keeps you from, it, it, it imparts you the fear of sin. There are things you cannot dare. People kill and steal because of the company they keep. When somebody becomes a cultist or becomes a, a ritualist, it's because of the company they keep. So the house of God is the place of commitment and consecration. Every time you hang around the house, the fear of God is there. The, 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 the iron sharpens iron. You, you see people who are, who, who, who are standing in the faith. And then you continue to stand. You see, when we're in the university, there was a strange doctrine that came at, at, at a point. Where some young men say, oh, um, church is no longer of God. Church is a Babylonian system. Um, God is no longer in the church. There was no need for church. And they kept themselves out of church. They were not going to fellowship anymore. They let them do it on their own. Before you knew it, explosion, negative explosion. Immorality like water. S some ramad. Some, all manner, because you cannot stay away from the presence of God and stay sane morally and otherwise. You can't. The best of man comes out in the presence of God, and the worst of man comes out in the absence of God. The best of man comes out in the presence of God, and the worst of man is released when we step out of God. Lift up your right hand and say, Father, say, Father, I receive the grace to remain in your presence. I receive that grace. Say the loudest, Amen. Amen. So what are the virtues? What do we have in the presence of God? First, the presence of God is a place of divine encounters. And second, the house of God is a place of spiritual and supernatural strength. And thirdly, the house of God is a place of revelation and illumination. Fourth, the house of God is the place of refuge and preservation. And five, the house of God is a place of blessing and flourishing. And six, the house of God is a place of wholeness and deliverance. And seven, the house of God is the place of commitment and consecration what is our practical action of dedication to the house of God number one be planted in the house of God be planted 
Psalm 92, verse 12 to 13, it said, Those that be planted in the the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. Be planted. What does it mean? Don't remain a permanent visitor, don't remain a spectator permanently. Don't remain a stranger in church. To flourish, you must be planted. Be involved. Be involved. Be involved. How many of you know that being present in a university does not guarantee graduation with a degree? You see, when we were in the university, there were some guys who were not reading any course at all. Their parents thought they were reading courses. Then when it was time for graduation, nothing. Listen, being present in the barrack does not make a military man. There are many people who live in the barrack that are not soldiers. Even your father being a soldier doesn't make you a soldier. You want to be a soldier, you lived in the barrack, you saw them with their uniform, you saw the way they marched and the way they were disciplined. You want to be a soldier, go and enroll. And then pay the price. You want to be a graduate and graduate with a degree, you must go to the university. You want to come to church and you want church to affect your life, you must be involved, be committed, enroll, enroll. Look at the testimony we heard just now. Young lady uh, with, with, with asthma, suffering from asthma. The, the sister too, hypotension, a nurse. Both of them were afflicted. She had done everything she knew to do, no solution. And then just one little wisdom, go to the foundation class. In class two, bam! What hydrocortisone couldn't do in relieving her obstructive or restrictive airway disease, be, be enroll indeed, and herself, her hypotension disappeared. Beloved, don't just be, don't just be a number, be a member, and don't just even be a member, be a follower of the teachings and the instructions. Be planted. Be planted. That is very, very important. That was number one. Be planted. But two, be faithful to your kingdom appointments. Be faithful to your kingdom appointments. Acts chapter 2 verse 46. They met daily. In one accord in the temple and from house to house. Be faithful to your kingdom appointments. Don't let allow things to be coming between you and your commitment to service. Don't let things be coming. I have noticed that I'm, I'm sure that one of the reasons why they call it service is because we come to be serviced. Spiritual, physical, mental servicing. Don't let things. Let me become more practical. Don't let not distance stop you. The house of your friend can never be too far. The house of your father can never be too far. The road to your father's house can never be too rough to travel on. How many people have not gone to a village or somewhere be only because they, 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 they felt the road was too bad? I mean, if your father's house was in a hole, you will travel, you will get there. Whether the government did the road there or not, that was immaterial. This is what practical commitment is all about. Don't allow anything. And also, don't let business appointment with a mortal man interfere with your appointment with God. You see, when we do things, God watches us. 
he's watching our priorities he says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added let me add a further one don't let christian television destroy your physical commitment to the house there are nations of the world today and i thank god for the great nation of america but i wish i, I hope that there are some christians who have not practically stopped going to church because they will sit at home to watch their popular preacher he didn't say so he didn't say they shall go from strength to strength as many in zion as watch the internet or watch the television he didn't say so he didn't say do not forsake listening to television he said don't forsake the assembling of yourself together am i communicating then why is that necessary it is necessary why are we on television we are on television for everyone who will not have the opportunity to be there physically we are on television for everyone who would want to listen to the preaching and the teaching even outside church service times we are on television to impact the world am i communicating don't let i'm watching internet i am watching facebook i'm watching television where possible don't let any of those disrupt your physical presence in the presence of the lord see we cannot do it in the modern way and get primitive results if we want to get apostolic results we must we must follow apostolic pattern they met daily in the temple and from house to house we must do it as rugged as they did it in order to get rugged results somebody say a loud amen somebody say the lord most amen if you are watching from all around the world i'm not saying that you should not accept especially when you are in places where maybe there is no access to church or anything like that that's all right god sees that but where it is possible to be in church physically and you fail to do so you have not done yourself any justice somebody say a loud amen somebody say the loudest amen somebody say the loud most amen if god spoke to you just now shout the loud most amen be faithful the place you give to god is the place you will give to you and finally be committed to the church in the house acts 2 46 and acts 5 42 showed us that they met in they they continued daily in the temple and in every house that was the pattern meeting in the temple and meeting in the house is god's pattern for the church and when the pattern is followed the glory must flow and then when your obedience is complete you can revenge all disobedience somebody say amen meeting in the temple and meeting in the house house fellowship or home cell is not a church doctrine it's not a, it's not a, it's not an invention of, of 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 a denomination it is a scriptural ordinance and pattern and when we follow the pattern of god we can get the results of god somebody say aloud amen in conclusion commitment to god and to his house is profitable both for time and for eternity commitment to god and to his house is profitable both for time and eternity and secondly it is not a waste of life or time to be commitment to be committed to god and his house it is never a waste of time or of life to be committed to god and his house do you know that throughout history great men and great women were committed to god I am, I am happy that we have our students from the Destiny Christian Academy here today. The Michael Faraday that you know, the Faraday laws of electrolysis. 
and all the Faraday laws and all the things he did in magnetism and everything that same Michael Faraday was a dedicated devoted church man I heard that if he came to any town he will first ask is there a church here show me where the church is that was his first the first thing he would ask for he was a laboratory attendant under the professor Humphrey Davy he eventually overtook the professor that he was working under because of his commitment to God don't let anybody tell you it is only those who don't have what to do that go to church that is modern day satanic lie that was Michael Faraday what of Robert Boyle you know Boyle's law in chemistry Robert Boyle was a devout Christian not just a devout Christian but a chemist a physicist and an inventor who was specially interested in missionary in missions to the point where he gave money from his pocket for the translation of the Bible to Turkish language and Irish languages in order for the gospel to spread that was Robert Boyle there is a man by the name Max Planck who was very instrumental in quantum theory Max Planck in 1858 to 1947 he was a church warden a church warden what they call church warden from the year of 1920 he was I mean you couldn't come to church and not know of Max Planck you have heard of John D Rockefeller I talk about him all the time John D Rockefeller is the richest wealthiest man of all time first dollar billionaire in the world philanthropist but he was a faithful member of his baptist denomination member to a point where he tithed from the first dollar committed to christian causes gave his university his 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 his, his, his denominations university 140 million dollar at once and he said why are you wasting so much money on church he said God gave me the money and I am giving it back to God what is your problem <laughs> is God speaking to somebody here at all then I'm sure there is not one person here who has not heard of Sam Walton of Walmart founder of Walmart Walmart stores who started working as a clerk at JC Penny store Walmart the Waltons are now the richest family in America and some people measure them as the wealthiest clan in the world Walmart is now the world's largest company revenue in excess of 500 billion with 2.3 million employees their workforce they are paying salary dedicated churchman Presbyterian hello are we still talking so church is for failures is that right from one family Sam Walton's family as at today from one family one two three four five six seven billionaires on the world's billionaires list seven billionaires one family children grandchildren first one Jim Wilton Jim Walton is worth 48.4 billion dollars second one is Robson Walton worth 48.2 billion dollars third one is Alice Walton what 48.1 billion dollars fifth one lucas walton what 15.6 billion dollars the other one is Anne walton many women there what 6.6 .6 billion dollars next one is christy walton 6.7 billion dollars other one is nancy walton 5.7 billion dollars all one father either father or grandfather 
who was a dedicated churchman and by that dedication Jehovah distinguished his generation who is that ignoramus personality suffering from mycobacterium stupiditis that will tell us that we are wasting our time serving God stand up on your feet people <laughs> I'm sorry but when I get angry I manufacture words that are appropriate <laughs> who says that we are wasting our time say oh no forget about there's nobody who is serious that is serving God it's a lie it happened before the most important people of every history had been people who knew God it's just in our days that there has been some perversion because some Christians have refused to be as committed to God as they should. But we are taking everything back. We are taking everything back. The field of science, those ahead were devoted Christians. The field of industry, the field of wealth, it was like that before. It will become like that again. Someone say amen. Somebody say loud, amen. Yeah. Look at your neighbor, say, Don't play with God, don't play with your commitment to church, to the kingdom. Don't play with it. Be committed, be devoted. It pays. Hi, 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 hi. I know God has spoken to somebody. Lift up your two hands, be upstanding. Lift up your two hands and lift your voice and give him the praise. Give the King of Kings the praise. Give the Lord of Lords the praise. The I am that I am the praise. Worship him at this moment. Worship him at this moment. Worship him. In Jesus' precious name. What I've noticed is that whenever we finish a message and start preaching, one or two people will try to distract by trying to exit. Please don't do that. We have a few more minutes to the end of service. So all movements are restricted so that we can receive what we came in here for today. You brought your bottles of oil? Uh, hold on, it's not time yet. I'll tell you when the time is. But you have been blessed by the word just now. Would you lift up your two hands and give him the praise? Give the Lord the praise for everything you have received so far. Give him the praise and give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Father, we love you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. Ancient of days and lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, Jehovah Rophecha, Jehovah Mekadesh, we love you, we honor you, we adore you. There is none like you. Lekesike Padagalaya Hasananash. Lemegede Sinugulaya Hasanaya. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the adoration. Father, we give you the worship. The supremacy the dominion the rule and the sovereignty blessed be your name honor to your name worship to your name glory to your name i am grateful lord we are grateful lord we are grateful master in jesus precious name lift up your two hands and say father i am here before you today to surrender myself to you to surrender my life to you to surrender my time to you help me lord where i have not been committed to you as i should i ask for mercy i ask for mercy i ask for mercy lift your hands and lift your voice and speak to god where i have not been committed to you as i should i ask for mercy i ask for mercy i ask for mercy ask for mercy oh lord in the name of jesus i ask for mercy i ask for mercy yes master yes master yes master we ask for mercy thank you master and thank you master in jesus precious name and then father draw me closer to you in relationship in fellowship in intimacy draw me closer to you lift your voice and speak to god draw me closer to you in relationship in fellowship in intimacy draw me closer to you draw me closer to you closer to you in relationship in intimacy in fellowship draw me closer to you go on and speak to god draw me closer to you draw me closer closer in relationship closer in fellowship Closer in intimacy, closer in union. Draw me closer to you, Lord. Thank you, Master.
Jesus' precious name.